Hey everyone, this is Josh and we're back at it again. This time we're talking about setting up our Solana dev environment. In the past two videos, we talked about getting our feet dirty with Rust and how and what a Solana smart contract looks like. Now we're going to set up the environment and then in the next video, we'll actually finally start writing a Hello Road program. So as always, disclaimer, this is not development advice. If you accidentally create code that rug pulls hundreds and thousands of users, that is not on me, that is on you. Always RTFM. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get a proper operating system environment. If you are on a Linux or a Mac machine, you are fine. You can just skip this step. Now, however, if you are on Windows, you have a problem. I personally tried this, but you cannot actually build a Solana program on Windows. You can only do it on a Linux environment. But worry not, there is a solution. You can use a Windows WSL, uh, which you can see if you go over here. I'll have the links in the description below. It's just a straightforward installation process. You just use WSL install on your command prompt and also make sure to do a sudo app update and sudo apt upgrade so you can get the latest bits when you actually want to download something on your environment. Now I'm going to assume we're all big boys and girls and we can install everything ourselves, but if there are problems or you want a more step-by-step -step instruction, um, I will link a video above where I installed WSL when I was working on Cardano. But just to highlight, um, you might also have to install a bunch of separately from the Microsoft Store. That's what I did. But who knows? Maybe things have changed. So next step. So after you have your WSL installed, you need to install Node on your Linux instance. And the reason why you need Node is because you need Node to build your front end, which we'll use in the next video. For convenience, I have the command down here, line four, five, and six. Uh, you just use curl to get the latest version of Node. Um, then you need to do a sudo apt get install, install it. And then you also later on you need to include the build essentials, which will be important for Solana. I just decided to include it here because it was also in the instructions. Um, as you can see, there's a, in the GitHub for the node resource, you scroll down, you can see the actual commands. See, I'm not pulling a fast one, getting you guys to download malicious software. Um, yeah, here's the LTS version. Just follow the commands and you scroll down right here, it says build the essentials. So great, now you have node. If you try doing npm install, uh, you might actually run into this error, um, this node jip version greater equal 3.62. I struggled with that for a bit. Uh, I found a solution in the stack overflow, which I will also include in the description. But the easiest solution I found to resolve this error is just to install yarn, which also includes npm. And the command is also inside the Stack Overflow. So do check it out if you run into this problem. So next up, we need to install Rust. Um, something I didn't mention earlier, if you want to connect to your WSL instance, you just type WSL on your command prompt and it will automatically connect you to your Linux environment. To install Rust, it's pretty straightforward. Again, uh, you just run this command, which I also include in the description. Uh, but if you visit the actual website itself, you can see that there's the command right here. In fact, I recommend just going to this website because I'm sure by the time you watch this video, the command I have in the video is probably deprecated. And since we're also here, I might as well show it to you. But um, for example, here's my command prompt. And if I type WSL, that will connect me to my WSL instance. So cool stuff. I'll just keep this up because we'll use it for later. So back to this slide. So wonderful, it should be pretty straightforward so far. We have Rust. Next up, we need to finally install Solana itself. Uh, also a very straightforward process. Um, WSL to your Linux instance and just follow the commands on the link that I provide, but it's basically just this command right here. The, right here, as you can see. Oops, probably should have made this bigger, but right here. Let's make it 200. Okay, great. So at this point, you should have everything you need to actually start running Solana, install your Linux environment. Uh, we're almost there. So we just need to set up one last thing and that's getting our Solana validator node running. We're not gonna really use it now, but later on when we're developing a program in the next video, we need to actually start a validator node where we can deploy our smart contract. And so to do that, we need to run a local instance of a validator node. And so this is just um, the setup work. So the first thing is we need to install Phantom Wallet. If you're not familiar with Phantom Wallet, well, quite frankly, I don't really know why you're watching this Solana development video, but Phantom Wallet is a Solana wallet that you can download and 
it's just stored on your Chrome extension. And you can see why did it switch back? But as you can see, it's this little tab right here. If you click on it, you can see that uh, I have my Phantom app wallet right here. And this will come into play later. But let's go back to the slide. And another thing is we need to do something, do something called cluster tuning, uh, which basically is just this command right here. Um, quite frankly, not really sure why we need it, but I ran into problems if I didn't have it. So just run this command on your environment and you should be good to go to deploy later on. Now, if somehow you decide to run that command earlier, um, which like I did before I found out, you can easily resolve this issue by first deleting the test ledger folder that gets created. Here, actually, I'll just show you. Um, if you look inside here, I have this test ledger folder I had when I started my validator node. So just delete this folder and run your cluster optimization and then try running again and you should be fine. All right, so that's everything we need to know about setting up our Solana environment. Um, now we can actually play with it for a bit. So playing with Solana, I think there are five basic commands that you should know just to kind of play around. And that's Solana config set, and you give the flag of localhost. And this just basically set your Solana to work with your uh, localhost. So this is good for your just testing your code that you write. Uh, there's Solana account, which will give you the address of your wallet that's located on your machine. Uh, if you install Solana, it will just automatically include a wallet for you. And then there's Solana. Okay, let me just. And then there's Solana balance and then the address which will give you how many Solana is located on the specific wallet. If you just do Solana balance by itself, it'll just give you the number of Solana inside uh, your current wallet. And then of course, the most fun command of them all, Solana airdrop. And you give it the amount and an address, and this command just airdrop Solana into your wallet. Now, if I can somehow get this command to run on prod, I would be a millionaire. But, you know, just leave me to my fantasy dreams. But anyways, this is just Great for testing, uh, you just airdrop yourself some Solana so you can play around with your smart contract. And then finally, we have Solana Test Validator, similar to what you might see in the Solana mainnet. In this instance, this node will just be on your local machine and uh, it's used mostly just so you can deploy your smart contract and interact with it. So let's just play around with some of it. I don't need to do any config settings since I already am there. But if we do Solana balance, we can see that I have 13 Solana inside my specific wallet. And if I do Solana address, you can see that this is the address that has that many balance. And like I mentioned, if I want to give myself more Solana, I can just do airdrop and I'll just give myself like a hundred. I'm going to be so rich after this. And I don't need to include the wallet. I'll just give it to my default wallet. Let me just let this transaction play out. And then if I do Solana balance again, if I can type, I, oh, interesting. Okay. I guess it doesn't let me go that large amount, but I'm curious. I'm guessing if I just run this command, it'll actually let me do it. No, I guess not. Well, okay. So maybe we can't do a large amount. It, it probably has some hard coded value, but you can include small numbers like one. There you go. So 14 Solana. So that, that's how we interact with our local some wallet, but what if we want to interact with a different wallet? Good question. And this is why we installed Phantom. Now if we go back up here. Uh, I connected to my Phantom wallet. Um, but if we just click on, oh, actually, so the first thing we need to do is we need to configure our um, network to be a local host. Uh, as you see, just click this cog wheel button on the bottom right. I'll just show it to you. Scroll all the way down and go to change network. So there's four networks, mainnet, testnet, devnet, and localhost. In this instance, we're just going to stay with localhost. But we might later also use devnet to actually deploy our smart contract. But anyways, so we're localhost. And... Now, if you just copy the wallet, and oh, I open my command prompt, I can do Solana balance. And you can see that there is five Solana in this wallet. Now I can airdrop some soul into this. Airdrop, let's say two. 
I'll run the transaction and now you can see that we have seven soul and I can just run the command again to verify, but as you see, we have seven Solana now. Now the final command that we need to run just to show is Solana uh, test validator. And this will start running the validator node. Just need to give it a sec. But what's interesting is if you notice while this is running, you open the wallet. Okay, it just started. But remember when you first initially opened it, it had a red arrow saying you're not connected. Now it says that you are currently connected. And that's only because we started running our validator node. Well, it's it's initializing, but uh, I, I assume the fact that uh, it's not connected probably means that it's running. Try it again. There we go. And so yeah, that's just some way to play around with Solana. Of course, that's not the main reason why we're doing this. We didn't come here just to run a validator node. But uh, yeah. In conclusion, in this video, we just did a quick and dirty run through of all the dependencies that you need to install to run Solana. Played a bit with the Solana console commands to get a feel of how to interact with wallets and add some Sol in there, but nothing too fancy. Now, in the next video, things are going to get more exciting when we're actually going to look at the Hello World example that Solana provides. We'll go over how a Solana program is implemented, and then we'll also look at the front end example to actually connect and interact with the Solana program. And then we'll finally deploy that program to the Solana DevNet just to play around with it. I'll be making that video shortly after I'm done editing this one. Hopefully, it won't be a long process. But until then, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next video. See ya.